If you haven't already, definitely try and make a trip down to the Florida Keys Eco Discovery Center. When you walk into the building, you will journey into the world of native plants and animals that are living on land and in water. You will definitely leave with an increased awareness and appreciation for the need to protect and conserve the ecosystem down here in South Florida. This morning I'm going to spend some time talking with Carrie Carnes from the National Marine Sanctuary. Carrie, thank you for being back with me this morning. It is a pleasure, mm -hmm. Jenna. Thank you for having me. Well, it's wonderful having you here, Carrie. And now we're upon 2013. It's here. So a lot of people, of course, they make resolutions for the new year. Carrie, what would be some resolutions that we could make to help keep our ocean cleaner? I would say that people can definitely commit to becoming a marine debris crusader. Mm -hmm. Marine debris is an issue that the sanctuary and actually all coastal communities around the world are kind of continuously battling. Um, the ocean for years has unfortunately been seen or viewed as a, a dumping ground, out of sight, out of mind, and it couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, here in the Florida Keys, we, um, part, we do a lot of marine debris cleanups just because of the nature of being a string of islands with mangrove fringe shorelines, a lot of that debris that passes through the ocean currents ends up on our shorelines and in our mangroves. So things that people can do or you know, make a resolution during 2013 uh, could be to reduce their dependency on some of these, these items that are commonly found as debris. And unfortunately, those are plastics, plastics, and plastics. Mm -hmm. um, plastics are forever. They don't biodegrade. And during our cleanups, we often find uh, plastics in the form of plastic bottles, pen caps, um, the, the, the six-pack, you know, soda container rings, styrofoam fishing, you know, styrofoam balls, fishing coolers, and those things just don't degrade. They stay in our environment. And so reducing your dependency on those things or perhaps making um, alternative choices uh, instead of plastic bags, which we find everywhere and are uh, a severe threat to wildlife and habitats, um, maybe opt for paper or, or bring your own bag, things like that. Um, these type of items, uh, as I mentioned, pose a threat to wildlife because unfortunately, a lot of those animals that we love to see, those icons of the Florida Keys, dolphins, sea turtles, and a lot of beautiful seabirds, mig migratory and wading bird populations, they come across these, these items in the wild and they think they're food. So we often talk about plastic bags and the fact that sea turtles um, mistake them for jellyfish because jellyfish are part of their natural diet and so mm -hmm. a floating plastic bag in the water looks a lot like a, a jellyfish lunch. Mm -hmm. um, the unfortunate reality of having a lot of fishing, you know, I shouldn't say unfortunate reality, but the reality of um, having a lot of fishing in the Florida Keys, it's a wonderful area to go fishing, mm -hmm. um, is that that monofilament and also the, the trap line is an entanglement hazard and so uh, we actually see a lot of that derelict line and fishing line that can entangle uh, sea turtles, dolphins as well. It cuts right into their skin. And I know the folks at the Sea Turtle Hospital have, have definitely encountered um, sea turtles with hooks that they've swallowed and things like that. So um, reducing you know, your use of certain products, but also disposing of it properly is really important. Um, so if you've got a monofilament, you've been fishing, don't just chuck it over the side of your boat, stow it away. The same goes for plastic bags. A lot of times they'll blow around on the boat and just blow right right over the side. Mm -hmm. So there's some very simple things that can make a big difference. And we also encourage people to participate in a marine debris cleanup. The sanctuary over the, the past several years has literally removed tens of thousands of pounds of debris. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen crazy things. It's not, you know, it's coolers, but it's pool noodles and lawn chairs mm -hmm. and all of these things that we know come from land. Mm -hmm. And um, But you can also uh, arrange your own marine debris cleanup. You can be a marine debris crusader in just your daily life. Mm -hmm. And kind of a mantra to live by is whenever you go any place, leave it cleaner than you found it. Mm -hmm. That's a great mantra to live by, Carrie. Now, is marine debris the same as pollution? I, a lot of people think of them separately. Mm -hmm. um, pollution, they think of big events like an oil spill. Um, but I often talk to people about pollution as a marine debris because they, they, it, it gives them a sense of perhaps control or that they can contribute uh, to the solution. And um, uh, storm drains. Storm drains are an important part of the equation because uh, all storm drains lead to the ocean. A lot of people don't realize that. They think that what goes into the storm drain perhaps gets you know, filtered and, and purified the way wastewater does, mm -hmm. and it doesn't. And we have seen and, and heard instances of people pouring things 
polluting things like used motor oil um, down the drain and that's, that's mm -hmm. not allowed because it goes straight out into the ocean. Mm -hmm. So we ask people to be very mindful of what they put in their driveways, what they put on their lawns because ultimately you know, we get heavy rain here sometimes and it literally just flushes it straight to the ocean. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that's horrible that, that that's happening right here. Absolutely. The mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, people have control over these things. There are mm -hmm. tangible, easy things that you can do. Mm -hmm. um, all the waters of the Florida Keys are a no-discharge zone. Mm -hmm. We care very much about water quality because water quality is important for the living marine resources, the coral reefs, the seagrass, the mangroves. Mm -hmm. And so being a water quality crusader and a marine debris crusader will very much help conserve these resources on which we depend. Mm -hmm. Now, Carrie, do you, when are you going to be going on your next cleanup if people want to get involved? We actually have a cleanup this weekend with Fury Water Sports. They're one of our Blue Star uh, dive and snorkel operators, and so they're hosting a cleanup out in the Key West National Wildlife Refuge this weekend. Great. And if you want any more information on the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, you can just check out the information that you see on the bottom of the screen. Carrie, thank you for being on the show, back with me today. Hopefully, people can take this resolution and and make our ecosystem a cleaner place. I'm going to be right back after these messages. Don't go away. <laughs>